Hello, I'm Christina Knight. I'm with 13 in New York City. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be on a competitive cooking show? Well, we're going to find out with three New Yorkers who went from their home kitchens onto national television with The Great American Recipe. This is amazing. I'm excited. What have I gotten myself into? One minute left. Game time. Welcome and congratulations to Brad Maloff, Liana Pierre, and Salma Hack. Thanks so much for having Thank us. You. I'm so excited. <laughs> I want to point out that The Great American Recipe is not an open audition. So kudos to you all for drawing the attention of talent scouts. You are among the nine home cooks who have made it to the show. So I thought we could start off by you sharing what your cooking and style is about and how did PBS find you? Uh, Brad, can you kick us off? During the pandemic, I created an Instagram account called Cook with Brad, where I was like, hey, it's the pandemic. Things have kind of like all been put on hold like all our lives. Let me just like kind of like capture all this food I'm cooking at home because now I'm not eating out as much at restaurants. And so that's kind of how my like cooking journey began. Generally, my cooking style is Jewish, Sephardic Jewish, Libyan Jewish, kind of like all things that represent my heritage. And um, PBS or I guess like some sort of associate of PBS reached out to me via Instagram saying, hey, we think you'd be a great fit for the show. And funny enough, when they first reached out, I thought it was a scam. They're like, oh, click this link and, and you know, like, 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 let's start this conversation. And, you know, I'm always skeptical, skeptical to click on links. So I was like, oh, no, no, thank you. I'm not interested. And then they kind of continued to, like, badger me a bit until I realized it's legitimate. And, you know, this kind of experience was so off my radar. But after, like, a little bit of thought, I was like, you know, what? like, this is what the universe is saying, like, should happen. Like, this is such a cool, amazing platform to share kind of, like, my story and, and these foods that, that I really like hold so like near and dear to myself. That's great. I, I love that you thought it was a scam and it was from the most trusted media outlet, PBS. That's it. Salma, tell us about your cooking and your style and how did PBS find you? So I am a Guyanese American home cook. I was born and raised in New York. Um, and I'm from Richmond Hill, so I grew up with all things Guyanese cuisine. Um, I grew up surrounded by West Indians. Uh, my mother and her siblings, my grandmother, they are huge cooks. So I grew up in that environment. And, you know, once I got married and I was off on my own, that was something I was ch I challenged myself to do, to recreate those recipes. Um, and actually what happened, I resigned from my job back in 2019. And I decided, you know what, I learned from my mom and my grandmother I need to chronicle this from my children as well too so that's how I started my little Instagram blog I had someone reach out to me through Instagram and I actually thought it was a scam too until he had to like send me it twice and I was, he's like this is my LinkedIn no this is not a scam please respond to me um, and a lot of the style that I post online it you know reflects about my story of why this dish is special to me um, how it you know I grew up eating it how I make it for my family and I feel like that's what attracted that Leanne Anna, tell us a bit about your cooking and your style and how PBS found you. So my cooking is kind of a combination of things. I think it's a reflection of the different places that I have lived. So I spent my first 17 years of life in the Bronx. I grew up in uh, Baychester, but my parents are from Barbados. And so growing up, a lot of the food that we had was Caribbean food and not just from Barbados, but all across the Caribbean. Um, but then New York just being what it is, being so diverse, you know, we were always in different neighborhoods trying different things, whether it was Little China, Little Italy, you know, there are pockets of the Bronx that are still incredibly Irish. Like, we just had a little bit of everything. And I think that's reflected in my cooking for sure. And then when I was 17, I moved to Atlanta to go to college and I never really left. So I've been in Metro Atlanta for over 17 years now. And there's definitely a Caribbean Southern fusion thing that's going on just because of my time here. In terms of how they found me, they found me on Instagram, but I actually did not think it was a scam. I am finding more and more that people are doing business through Instagram, connecting through Instagram. So I wasn't quite as suspicious, but maybe I should be. Thank you. I am really curious how you can possibly prepare for a competitive cooking show. So. Was there a way you were trying to level up your game before you started shooting? If I'm completely honest, not really. 
<laughs> I, I think, you know, I was so busy with work. We just had a lot going on at the office that while in my mind, I would like to have done those things, I just didn't have the time. What I did spend time doing, though, was kind of polling my friends and family to ask them, what are the favorite things that I have made for you across the years, whether it's an appetizer, an entree, a dessert, like when you say, I'm going to Leanna's house, you want me to serve you this. And that's what I really spent time thinking about. Like, what do, what are those recipes that really represent me and my friends and family think of when they think of me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Selma, how about you? Was there any way that you prepared yourself in advance of this Great American Recipe <laughs> shoot? So, I mean, it was a, a dream. First, I was an honor to be chosen um, to, you know, stand amongst all of the other home cooks. But let me start fine tuning my recipes. Let me see how I can make it better. And then I had to like recheck myself and then reset it to say like, you know, I was, I was discovered or, you know, they found me on Instagram based off of how I cook naturally, um, what it is I'm cooking at home, what it is I grew up eating. And I'm just going to stick to that. So I, one thing I did have to do is, you know, I cook without measuring and I knew it was coming, you know, how much of this are you putting in, you know, what, what measurement of cup for this and tablespoon of that. So I think that's really where I had to reset myself, you know, stuck to my style. It was just like, now I had to fine tune that on my end to figure out like how much, you know, curry powder am I putting in? What tablespoon does this amount to? Um, so I was really looking at that, the measurements. Okay. So you, you, what you just naturally did without having to measure it all. You were like, tonight I'm going to see how much I put in this cup. Exactly. <laughs> and I guess now you have a recipe you can share with people once you know the measurements. Okay. Um, Brad, how about you? Well, firstly, similar to Salma, um, Generally, when I cook, it's by feel. I don't really follow recipes. But I think when I found that I was going to be on the show, it went from excitement to dread because I was like, oh, God, this is real. And I'm totally unqualified and I'm going to make a fool of myself. So like once that kind of calmed down, um, I think I think the biggest thing in terms of preparation was I definitely wanted to represent like my traditional Libyan Jewish foods. And the thing about those foods, though, is that oftentimes they take like hours and hours to make. And so figuring out how to create these recipes within an hour. So I think like I purchased an Instapot before, before I went to, you know, film the show and try to figure out how to use one. And it was a lot of trial and error. We didn't have that much time. I actually found that I was going to be on the show, like not much before we had to leave for the show. So it was like a two week period where I was cooking so much. And, you know, I kept buying all these things and trial and error. And then I would like, it would not come out well with like, kind of like the, um, a bridge version that uh, I was getting stressed. There's not so much you could really do except kind of like mm -hmm. just calm down and realize like trust your gut and cook the way you normally do because that's kind of why why they chose you for this experience and like be there to represent like who you are and and you know just kind of like enjoy the experience and enjoy the ride. Exactly. And really to echo off of Brad too, it's just like staying authentic. I feel like that authenticity and like the sincerity of how we cook and representing you know our cultures and our background that was huge and you know not much of fine tuning that we had to do for that so I think we're just sticking to that but also like Brad I, I too had to purchase an instant pot because I had never used one prior <laughs> I'm like I'm not going to make my first time being on the show so I will say mm -hmm. Samuel, you hit something on the head where you talked about not measuring I was always mm -hmm. told when you're seasoning things you season until you hear yep. the ancestors whisper <laughs> enough my child that is yeah. it <laughs> that is how you do it so exactly that was definitely interesting for me having to like write everything down even though yeah. I have a blog like yeah. I probably it's put <laughs> one one hundredth of my recipes on there, everything else, it's like on the fly. So I definitely feel you on yeah. the measuring aspect because cooking is such a sensory experience, right? Mm -hmm. It's the sounds you exactly. hear. It's the, the, the feelings that you get. Mm -hmm. Like when you're making biscuits, you know when the butter's just right, the exactly. temperature's just right. It's the taste. It's all of these things that can be really challenging to explain in writing to someone who does not cook a lot or is just not familiar with this particular type of cuisine that you're making. I also feel in a way that's kind of a distinction, but obviously training aside, a distinction between a home cook and a professional chef. Like a home cook, each time is, you know, you might make the same dish and it's always similar and has the same essence, but it's never exactly the same. Where obviously if you're working in a restaurant, it has to have like a certain amount of consistency. So I think that like, 
there's more of an art in a way to being a home cook. I mean, for me too, you know, which is very similar to Brad and Liana, it was when I learned, you know, it was by really seeing and, you know, being present with my mom and my grandmother, just, you know, in the kitchen with them. And, you know, whenever they would throw things into the pot and say, how much is that? And they'd be like, oh, just average, you know, estimate the amount. I'm like, average and estimate is not like a smidge. Yeah. <laughs> like a dash. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's like more than a sprinkle. I heard Instapot as, as something that people were practicing <laughs> practicing with. I know that the show was going to provide everyone their own cooking station. And I think they did get a heads up of the types of ingredients you use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But did you bring your safety? Did you bring your own something with you to be sure you had exactly what you wanted? Oh, yeah, most Absolutely. definitely. The, the show, like they basically said, hey, we're going to supply you with everything you need. But even then, I kind of brought my own spices. I brought, I even brought my own salt because I, I like, I'm so specific with like the kind of salt I use and I'm like, what if they give me a different brand and then it has like a different feel. So like things like that, I definitely was like very, like, I need to make sure I have this because if I don't have it, like, it's just going to be a disaster. Um, but like the show really did a really good job with supplying us the things we need, but there was definitely, like, there was definitely times when I was glad I had my own brands and like things that like that made me feel like I'm cooking at home in a way. Same. I definitely uh, some of my own things, particularly some of those things that you often find in smaller Caribbean shops yeah. or you have someone bring from home <laughs> for you because I just wasn't sure what they would be able to source out by the farm. So we all have our little secret sauce that we keep just in case. But yeah. I don't want to reveal too much before the show airs. <laughs> I will say, yes, we all did kind of walk with our own spices in our pockets, you know, travel through <laughs> with, um, you know, certain specialty ingredients, but they were very accommodating. Like I follow a halal diet, Brad follows a kosher diet, and they were very accommodating to, you know, ensure that we had what we needed to meet our dietary restrictions. The Great American Recipe judges Leah Cohen, Graham Elliott, and Tiffany Derry are world-class chefs, mm -hmm. so respected. <laughs> and the host, Alejandra Ramos, I don't know what she hasn't done in the world <laughs> of culinary arts. Can you share a best or a memorable tip that one of them shared with you? Okay, wait. <laughs> I feel like if we think about this, all three of us are going to say <laughs> the, the same thing. thing. Yes. It's one word. Let's mm -hmm. try it at the same Let's time and see if we're all <laughs> thinking the same thing. Same word. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Salt. Salt. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, I'm sorry. Y'all yeah. y'all go ahead. But I just no, that but was the first Liana, thing that came to mind. Liana is absolutely correct because um you know for everything that we we did cook and what we did present to the, to the judges first off I'll say like you know it was one thing to be in that kitchen space and to start cooking but then to see you know Tiffany Leah Graham and Alejandra in front of you I'm like okay this is real now like they're actually like I am going to serve them this food like this is the first time they're going to taste something of like Guyanese cuisine but you know as simple as it is to say a little bit of salt goes a long way, I now see it and I really take that to heart because, um, you know, you're very cautious that you don't want your food to be over salted or salty. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, listening to that, you know, the way that they say, okay, place salt on this piece of, you know, ingredient on this style or when you're at this step in the in the cooking process that's when you should re-salt it again. It makes sense. So it's not just about seasoning once but throughout the entire process. Obviously, like, yes, like the theme is like season throughout and make sure that you taste and, and taste as you go. But one thing I think a lot of our ethnic foods, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I actually think it applies to all three of us, is a lot of our foods are very brown. And, and you know, kind of how to make like these kind of ethnic brown dishes kind of look pretty and elevated. So, you know, kind of how to garnish them and how to make them look a little bit more colorful and appealing. So I think like the judges really kind of made us focus on that. So I think that's something I definitely kind of took away from the experiences, like how to plate things in a little bit more of a mindful way. And even the types of plates that you select, yeah. the color of the plates color. that you select. <laughs> I don't think I have looked at my uh, plate cabinet the same way ever since. I actually yeah. have brown plates and I'm like, yep, 
time to replace them. Brown on brown on brown. <laughs> That's right. That was amazing. I was not expecting you all to have the same takeaway. <laughs> as I just before. knew it in my I mean, yes. in my bones. Like, this is what it is. <laughs> Going in, did you think, oh, I've always like wanted some coaching on salt? I know, I've seen enough cooking shows that I think that I think like the theme of most cooking shows is season, 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 salt, salt, salt. Yeah. So it yeah. wasn't so surprising. But then I think when you think of your own food, you're like, no, my food is perfectly mm -hmm. seasoned most of the time. So you don't think it applies to yourself, but then you exactly. find out actually it probably does. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what it is too, is that we're so accustomed to cooking for like our family and friends that are used to our style of cooking. So, so to have someone new taste it and to really look at it from a different perspective of not knowing what this food is supposed to taste like, to offer mm -hmm. that advice, like, you know, it is very helpful. I loved how you all had a coordinated cheer on that one. <laughs> Thank you all for this fun and enlightening conversation. The Great American Recipe premieres June 19th on PBS stations like 13 at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central.